Hey what's up everyone, so in this video today I'm going to share with you my process of making a award winning portfolio website. So I started working on the site since last year and finally released it a couple weeks ago and it had recently won the FWA award for the site of the day category and also feature on Musly and hopefully it will win the award site of the day soon so it take a little bit longer because of their voting process so finger cross and I also received a lot of incredible feedback from people around the world told me how they love the idea and some were curious about how I made it so that's why I make this video today so I will break down the whole process of making the site from ideation to design to motion and implementation so I will also share some of my pain points during the making of this site and how to overcome them so let's get into it so the first thing we need to do before making a creative website is to define the concept so the core concept of my website is what if I introduce myself in the most honest way so I started to write two narrative for the site one is the typical form way and the other one is the honest version in which I tell the truth about myself. So by default, you can only see the first formal version, but when you hover on the text, it will reveal the honest version lying underneath. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this is the one, this is what I'm looking for. So I decided to go with this concept. So the white framing is pretty simple because this is just a one page scroll experience. But the most challenging things in this process is copywriting. Because I needed to find the right tone of voice that is funny enough but not too offensive. And another challenge when writing the copy is to write two opposed versions. And each of these versions has to have similar length to avoid breaking the layout. If one is longer than the others, the whole interaction will not work. So before starting to explore the visual for the site, I kind of map out the three principles to be the backbone of the design language. So the three principles are minimal, typo-based, and constructive. So based on this three principle, I started to explore the visual direction for the site. And this is when things started to slow down. So it took me four months to struggle to explore the best design I could think of. And the reason why it took me so long is because it's one thing that I suffer from, the perfectionism. Yes, it's a thing. Perfectionism can trigger anxiety and depression, which will build up when you don't meet the high standard you set for yourself. But I believe every designer has already experienced this, especially when working on your personal project. You know, projects that have no boundaries, no deadlines, no managers, so that's not like a perfect world, but you could be trapped in the state where you cannot move forward because you keep changing your mind to strive for the best that you can do. So here are a few iterations that I did earlier. So you can see that I tried many things from light theme to dark theme, from spade to 3D. And every time I finish a version, another idea popped up and made me wanted to do it again. And then it just went like that as a circle. Until one day, I started to look back at my first three principles and one of them were minimal. So I just realized that I was going too far from those principles and then I started to sit down and started to remove things instead of adding more things. And finally, I came up with the design that I'm truly happy with. And I realized that it's not about making the best design in the world, it's about making a design that expresses myself as a designer. So besides the copy, the backgrounds also play a very vital role to bring the design to the next level. So I wanted to use a dark grayscale photography style so it could blend into the black background and creating a cohesive look and feel. And then I used a Fujifilm camera in my humble home studio to shoot some slow motion footage with the help of my wife and my very friendly dog. So one of the most important part of the portfolio site is the portfolios, which is the project showcase. So uh, the reason why that I use a video sizzle reel instead of using a project case study because 
most of my projects are under NDAs with the agency that I'm working for. So that means I cannot show any of those in public. So it's not worth making a case study features in this site. So uh, a sizzle real video sounds like a more reasonable approach and it's still enough to showcase my skill and my project but it's not detailed enough to violate those NDA contract. So after finalizing the design, I put everything into After Effects and make a motion video demo. So this is optional but it's still very crucial because it's helped me visualize how the interaction would work, what's working, what's not working before spending time implementing it. First of all, a lot of people ask me how I implemented this. So the fact is I have no idea because I'm not the one who coded. So I hire an excellent developer named Hun Chen to take care of the implementation because I can do some basic website with some web builder tool but for this one I wanted to get to the level that can win design awards which means every details had to be perfect and the interaction had to be super smooth and everything must work perfectly so that's why I needed to bring the best people to take care of it. So here's an overview of how he did it. So he made two identical HTML layout and the only difference is the text and the color. So, and then he used a mass image CSS to create a circle mass that follow the mouse cursor to reveal the hidden text. So it might sound simple, but uh, it was pretty time consuming to ensure that the two layouts match up and especially while being responsive. So to make this smooth scrolling motion, he used the Lenis libraries and he also used the G Sharp library for other smooth interactions like hover and transition. And for the real time 3D, I make these models in Cinema 4D and exported them to GLTF format and then Hun integrated it to the side using PreGS. So for the mobile version, since there's no mail cursor on mobile, so I came up with a solution to use the press sketcher to reveal the text. Uh, so we also had to cut down some of the features like parallax or 3D 3GS to optimize the performance. So the mobile version is a little bit less fancy. Alright, so that was a quick overview of how I make this award-winning portfolio website. So I hope this encourages you to start building your own or for those of you who still procrastinating like me to finish this and get it out there to show everyone what you are all about, what you can do. So this is the end of my video today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.